recording started good morning everyone welcome to today's session and it is we're going to study on a very interesting book the book of job so even before we could start with our studies can i request one of us to lead us in prayer yes please Rosalind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, wonderful Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we have been studying your word since morning, Lord God, thank you for your presence. Even as we continue to be in your presence to study your word, Lord, I pray and ask you to give us your, to enlighten our eyes of understanding. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord. Father God, we want to we don't want to be just the hearers of the word of God, but doers yes. of the word yes. of God. Lord, yes. give us the grace, Father God, that we may we may do, we may apply what whatever we learn in our daily life, Lord God, and that we may be a blessing, not only to our families, but to but to everyone like who when we come across, Lord God. Father, we thank you and bless you, Lord. I also pray for our dear pastor. Bless her, Lord. Anoint her, Father God, as she teaches us your word. Lord, you speak through her. Lord, we thank you and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Well, um, as of yesterday, we studied on the book of Esther. So that completes our study on the historical book. So if we could turn to the content page of our Old Testament, we studied the first five books, that is the Torah, the Pentateuch. And then we started with the historical books, starting with Joshua, uh, Judges, Ruth, and the 12 historical books we studied on, which we completed with the book of Esther as of yesterday. And Today, we're going to start on the poetic and the wisdom book, poetic and the wisdom book. So starting with Job, let me share the notes with you so that we all can stay on the same page. Okay, so here's the introduction to the poetic books. We have five books, starting with Job, and then Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And uh, each book has their own theme, problem, and the progress. And we also see the portrayal of Christ in each book that we would study as we go through each book. And then the contrast between the history and the poetry. Uh, poetry. So the history books, uh, stressed on the emphasis on the facts of the history, whereas in the poetic book, we see the emphasis on the experience of life. And in the uh, in the book of history, we see the concerned with the nation. Uh, we see the formation of Israel, and uh, they were concerned about the Israel, even though they were taken into exile. But we see uh, the uh, the move of God in uh, Israel in, among the Jewish people. And in the poetic, we would see concerned with the individual, with the individual person, how God moves in that person, and. Uh, and we also see the history dealt with the Hebrew race, that is a Jewish. And here we see in the poetic book, we see God dealing with the human heart. Well, there are three kind of Hebrew poetry we see. One is the lyrical poetry, and uh, which is uh, the Psalms, most of the uh, Psalms. Second, we see dietic poetry. It teaches uh, from the uh, from the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. It talks about uh, the life of a person and how he needs to live and what would be the consequences of his action. And actually, it speaks the wisdom how a human, how a man should live in their life. And the third is the dramatic poetry, where a lot of dialogues we would find. One is the book of Job, and the other is the book of Solomon. And book of Job is what we would be studying in the next few minutes. <clears throat> and there are four types of parallelism. We see the synonymous parallelism. 
and then we see the authentical parallelism and synthetic or the progressive parallelism and the climatic parallelism this is what we see and you can just go through it in detail with the example so that it can be your self-study so with this we will move on to the book of job okay so i will I will close this note. We will not go in detail because it's self-explanatory. I will directly go to the uh, uh, book and we will study on it directly. Okay. I'll just close this and I'll present. One second, while I press in the yeah, yes. Are we able to see the presentation? Because I'm not able to see the presentation. Yes, ma'am. We are able to see. You yes, are able to see the presentation? Yes, yes ma'am. The book of Job. Yes, yes. Uh, for some reason, I'm not able to see. Just give me a minute. I'll just find out why. How do we get this? I think now I'm able to see it. Yeah. Yes, now I'm able to see. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. Yes. So the book of Job. So uh, all of us would have heard, just like how we would have heard the story of Esther, I'm sure we would have heard the story of Job. So what is your learning from the book of Job or till now the story that you heard about Job? You can just share your views on the book of Job. Maybe two or three. Can speak up, please. Anyone, whatever you know about the book of Job, please. We all have heard about the book of Job, isn't it? Before it's not the first time we are going to study. Yeah, um, uh, can I share? Uh, yes, please, the beer. Yeah, so uh, Job, uh, we know that he is uh, he is portrayed as a righteous man, uh, one who fears the Lord and is blameless, um, and he tried to uh, you know honor God uh, with all all the blessings that he had. We know he was very very much blessed, um, and whenever his uh, children used to have. Uh, uh, something going on, he, he would just uh, do sacrifices for them and try to, you know, please God, uh, you know, uh, for that. And uh, we also read how the devil came and um, uh, the hedge of protection was taken off and Job was, uh, you know, aff afflicted. Um, yeah, oh, he lost his children, uh, all of his, uh, all the blessings that he had. Um, and we see like his uh, wife, even his friends, uh, you know, they were coming and trying to um, blame uh, God, blame Job. Um, so we see all these happenings still Job is not forsaking God. Um, and in the end, yeah, as we read like... God um, honors Job, and he prays for his uh, friends who were affected later on. So, and uh, Job was blessed uh, in a double, double portion. Thank you. Well said, Dubi. I think you covered everything in detail. Thank you so much. Yeah, as uh, she, as uh, Divya gave us an introduction to the whole story, we will go directly to study on the book of Job. Well, uh, the author. Who's the author of this book? 
anyone in the class who's the author of this book moses moses is the author okay yes uh, uh, actually the scholars say that the author is unknown some believe moses to be the author uh, uh, because of the vocabulary that has been used which is similar to the book of the pentateuch the first five books with this book of job but the other scholars also say that job would have also been the author due to the details of the conversation that has been recorded and uh, the old testament scholars say that those days the old testament writers uh had the way of writing as a third person to narrate the story so they may not be uh, writing the story from the personal perspective but they would be writing the story as though a third person is writing so the scholars still have a debate saying some say it may be moses uh, because of the same kind of language but then others say it may be job himself because the details that has been written here looks like it cannot be uh, uh, given by somebody else a different writer but then maybe job himself so uh with this perspective in our mind uh, we are not able to give the exact date because they are not confirmed with the author however approximately it may be in 2000 bc so the scholars say that the book of job is considered as the oldest book in the bible and job probably lived during the same time period of abraham as we don't get to hear anything uh, uh, why we say uh, uh, this may be the time period of abraham is because of certain evidence because in the book of job we don't get to read anything about the exodus moment or talking about law torah or of the israelites or the jewish people in the book okay uh, with this we will uh, go to the introduction of this book it says uh, that well uh, we uh, uh, till now we have studied on the first five books of the pentateuch and then we studied on the 12 historical books um, which comprises the history and then in the pentateuch we saw the creation uh, uh, from the time of creation to the persian empire uh, of which the israelites were in uh, the exile in babylon and then they have returned back to some of them have returned back to jerusalem well uh, the record of history of jewish nation has been there and now we see the book of job but then the, uh, it has been included in the book of uh, poetic that's why the book of job is here and not in uh, not in between genesis or after uh, genesis yes so uh, So the time period of Book of Job is during the time of Abraham. So, uh, as we start to study study on the Book of Job, the Book of Job has forty two chapters. It has forty two chapters, and the whole time period. Some of the scholars say that the whole time period of this book may be of nine months. Some scholars say it may be three sixty five days. That is one year, and some of them say maybe. to you so we exactly we are not sure like what was the time period of this book the suffering of job was but exactly for a short period of time that is what we can confirm with the whole story so it opens with a short narrative introduction in chapter 1 and 2 and chapter 3 to chapter 37 is the central body of the book where uh, it is most of uh, most of uh, it is written in the hebrew poetic form representing the conversation between job and a uh, uh, first few chapters records the first three friends of him and then the last friend comes to visit him so totally we have the narration of four uh, friends of job and they discussion with him and uh, from chapter 38 we see job's conversation with god and it concludes with the poetic speeches by god to job with this we will move on to chapter 1 so in chapter 1 chapter 1 it starts with the introduction uh, to job and we are told that he is blameless he is upright and one who feared god and also we see that he was an innocent and a good man that's what we see in the first first second and third and the third verse says that he was a wealthy man and a man of prayer so how is uh, wealth 
been measured by the uh, possession that he had in verse 3 it says uh, possession where the 7000 sheep 3000 camels 500 yoke of oxen and 500 female donkeys and you see uh, down you see a very large house also uh, that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east and in uh, as we mo and we also see in verse 5 or verse 4 we see that his sons would go and feast in their houses and each on his appointed day and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them and verse 5 can i request anyone in the class to read verse 5 verse 5 so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that job would send and sanctify them and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all for job said it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed god in their hearts thus job did regularly yes so what we see in verse 4 that his sons would go out for a feast and his daughters are invited and we see the concern of Job in verse 5. Verse 5 is concerned about his children and uh, he sees to us that he rises in the morning and he offers a burnt offering according to the number of them all. But Job said it may be that my sons uh, uh, have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus. Job did this regularly. Whenever they were feasting and enjoying their life, that is Job's children, he see to it that he offered the burnt offering and he continued to pray. What do we learn from this situation? We see to it that if the cho children are grown certain um, uh, uh, older in age where uh, as a parent we may not be able to control or correct the child, but then one thing what we could do is pray and intercede like Job. He interceded and he prayed. Okay. But then one thing that we need to see here with Job was he also had a fear within him. He was fearful. Why did he pray continuously over the children and offer burnt sacrifice? We see in chapter 3 verse 25. Chapter 3, verse 25. <clears throat> For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. What I feared would happen to my children has come upon me. So one thing we need to do is, whatever Job was doing here, <clears throat> he was doing this with fear, not in faith. We need to remember, fear lays the foundation for the bad things to happen. Whereas faith lays a foundation for God to work a miracle in our life. So whenever we come to God, we need to come in faith, not in fear. So as a human, yes, we would come across this emotion in us, but then God has given us the authority. What was not in Job is with us. Who's that? What is that Job didn't have, but we have today in our life? Holy Plus, Spirit. Yes, yes. We have the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the healer, the guider, who is in us is much powerful. Greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. So Job didn't have the Holy Spirit, but he was a fearful man of God, servant of God. But we have the Holy Spirit with us. When we come across certain situation like this, yes, we need to come in the presence of God and intercede and pray. But let's pray in faith because faith moves God. Faith attracts God to us. Fear brings destruction, but faith brings miracle. Okay, so with this, we'll move back to our class. Okay, in verse 6, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 6, can I request one of us to please read uh, verse 6 to 19? Sorry, 6 to 12. 
6 to 12 step by step. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? The Satan Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? So, you have uh, blessed the work of his hands. Go ahead, go ahead, sure. Um, you have, uh, I mean, verse 10, second part. You have blessed the work of his hand and his possessions have increased in the land. But put, put forth your hand now and touch all that he has. He will surely curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So in verse 6, we see that uh, now there was a day when the sons of God came into present themselves before the Lord. So who is the son? Sons of God. Ma'am, maybe angels. Okay, right. Sons of God in the Old Testament. Okay, it is a very common image in the Old Testament describing how God runs the world and among the heavenly beings. It is a figurative language where it, it is related to the heavenly being. Sons of God is the heavenly being. Uh, whereas in the book of New Testament, okay, uh, <clears throat> In the book of uh, uh, totally, I guess eleven times it is mentioned in the uh, uh, in the book of Old Testament. Uh, two times in the book of Genesis and uh, three times in the book of uh, uh, in the book of Job. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, also in the New Testament it is mentioned five times. In the book of New Testament, it is mentioned five times the sons of God. Whereas the Old Testament, when it mentions the sons of God, it denotes the uh, angels. And in the New Testament, when it talks about the sons of God, it is denoted. Wait, most of the times, uh, Paul has been uh, 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 Paul has been uh, writing in the book of Corinthians or in the book of Romans and Philippians. He has mentioned the sons of God. Okay, where it is denoting us. As a sons of God and uh, uh, not the angelic being. So in the Old Testament, when it is mentioned the sons of God, it is denoting us. Uh, sorry, in the Old Testament, it is denoting the angelic being. And in the New Testament, when it says sons of God, it is denoting the uh, uh, us. Okay. Whereas in the book of Romans, if you take up Romans 8, 17, Paul, uh, uh, say, Paul wrote to the brethren of Rome, as many uh, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So this sons of God is talking about us. And also again, in the book of Philippians, Paul encouraged the Philippians brethren, uh, brethren uh, saying, be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse, perver perverse nation among whom you shine as a light in the world. And also in 1 John 3, uh, 1 and 2, it says, uh, the beloved John writes, he, he writes saying that, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. So here, it's talking about us, beloved. Now we are the sons of God. It's talking about us. But in the Old Testament, it is talking about the angelic being. Are we clear? And now we are back to our, our, our scripture, where in verse 6, it talks about uh, having a quote scene with God, uh, the sons of God, that is the angelic being, God himself, and Satan. And Satan. So in verse 8, we see, have you considered Job my servant? And God is describing about Job. He is blameless. He is upright and one who fears God. 
And here in verse 9, we see that Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Do you think he fears you for nothing? But you see, you have put an edge around him. That means even if certain wanted to attack him, Satan is not able to do that because God's protection hedge is around Job. It's around him as an individual person, around his household, around his family, and around all that he has on every side, around his wealth and possession that he has. You have blessed the work of his hands. Because Job feared God, God has blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Very important verse. Can we mark this? This is what God protection can do for each of us. One who fears God and walks uprightly friend of God. This is the protection of God that we have. That's why when we pray, we say, Lord, you put your edge around us, around our family, around our possession, everything that we have so that the enemy cannot come near us or attack us. Nothing can arm us. Here we see the confirmation of God's protection, that the enemy is not able to come near Job, because God's protection is around him. Now Satan is asking, remove that protection, so that I can attack him and see. Even after that, will he please God? Will he fear God? Will he still praise you or will he curse you? And God says, okay, I'll permit you. But then there is a condition. Do not touch. Do not touch him. And then uh, we come to uh, verse 13. Verse 13, we see uh, uh, Job loses all his property and possession. There's a certain man who comes certain man who comes and tells uh, a job of the things that is happening there was a uh, uh, there was a day when his son and his daughters were eating and drinking suddenly a messenger come to job and said the ox were plowing and the donkeys feed beside them and uh, you know the sabian raided them and took them away killed they uh, killed your servant and edge of the sword and i alone have escaped to tell you so we see that uh, you know the the raiders have come and raided all your cattle, your camels, your bean, and you know, they have killed your servant. And I was alone who's escaped to come and tell you the news. While he was still speaking, another servant came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away. Yes, and killed your servant with the edge of the sword. And I'm alone, escaped. Suddenly you see the destruction. When everything was peaceful and nice, uh, everything was well with Job. But suddenly things are changing. And while he was still speaking, another came and said, your sons and your daughters who were eating uh, and uh, drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Now all the children of Job have died. Then Job arose, tore his clothes, and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and worshipped God. With a very beautiful verse, verse 21 said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a very hard thing for any of us to say like this and pray, but it was only the grace of God made Job to say this with a greater understanding, with what wisdom he says in that situation, that naked I came, naked I go. And in 22nd verse, it says, And all this Job did not sin, not charge God with anything wrong. With anything wrong. And later in chapter 2, we see that how Job's health has been attacked. Again, there's a, uh, uh, again, there's a conference in the heavenly realm. And now again, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Satan says, 
you need to touch his skin, his bones, and you see how will be what will be his reaction. And God again permits that, but says you should not, uh, with a condition, nothing should happen to his life. And now you see there's sores all over his body from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. He's been afflicted with pain. The boils had too much of pain. With all this, he's been sitting there with great turmoil and with pain. In this situation, I'm sure, as he was blessed, he was standing as an example, a man of blessing in the nation, and many people would have looked up to him and uh, saw that he was a man of God and he was a man of blessing. The same people who, who spoke well about Job is now, Okay, coming and looking at the situation, and each one would have their own uh, own share of words uh, talking about Job's situation. And then we see his own wife who comes to Job, and she says in uh, chapter two, verse nine, he says, "Then his wife said to him, "Do you still hold fast to your integrity?" He was known as a man of integrity, and his wife says. Curse God and die. It is better for you to curse God and die. Why did she say this? Why did Job's wife say, curse God and die? She could have just said, no, go and die. Why did she say, curse God and die? Class, open to you. Why do you think she would have said this? Last time is running, so we need to be fast to complete the whole story. Anyone, there's nothing a wrong answer, right answer. Just share what your thought is. Feel free. Be comfortable in the class. That's okay. I think uh, um, his wife thought actually all the actual problems uh, is occurring because of God only. God is the re reason behind every problem. Okay. Anyone else? Ma'am, may I? Yes, please, Sid. Ma'am, as in Genesis, we see that Satan used Eve to eat that fruit and to do a, to do a sin. And the whole mankind came under the sin. So what I was thinking that in the same way, Saturn might have used that Job's faith is not breaking or shaking. So I will use his wife to touch Job so that he can do at least he can curse God. That's what I was thinking. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Sid. Yes, God reveals it to us in this way. Thank you. As it has been, I'm sure it has been from the God's wisdom that you shared. Yes. Yes. The ultimate motto for the enemy to do everything, to destroy his wealth, his possession, his children. And still we see uh, in the end of chapter 1, we see in all this Job did not sin, not charged God with wrong. Verse 22. Ultimately, why the Satan is trying to do all this? Not to trouble Job, but to show God that this man also can curse you. When you take away all the blessing, he can curse you. Because Job has not reacted till now, what was expected from the Satan, he talks through his wife. Just like how in the New Testament we see that uh, uh, when... Um, Peter didn't allow God's plan. Uh, you know, uh, God said, rebuke you, uh, get away from me, Satan. You know, so he's not telling Peter that he's Satan, but the very thought that Peter shared was not from God's plan. It was from the enemy. So even here, we see that she's been used by the Satan. The very thought that she shared is not from God, but exactly fulfilling what the enemy wanted Job to do. So it's coming to the point, curse God and die. Curse God and then you die. Anyway, you die, but then curse God so that 
anyway the enemy cannot take his life because god has not given him that permission okay one second he wants job to curse god both the things can happen only through job so exactly the, to the two points is coming he's saying curse god so that my plan is fulfilled and kill yourself die because i cannot do anything to you god has not permitted me he has not given me that permission to do anything to you so friends any difficulty any word in our uh, difficult situation these kind of thoughts the enemy can put in our mind also or through people like this difficult situation can come to any of us all of us because we are living in a fallen world and our mind is a battlefield if you see the newspaper or the magazine you see everywhere young young children young adults are been uh, committing suicide doing all kind of wrong things killing each other misbehaving with the little children little girls have been raped and killed where all this happening who is behind the scene you saw what's happening so we need to pray we need to stay strong in the lord if each of us are going through any such situation we need to hold on to god because only he can protect us he can bring us out god is a god of wisdom with his wisdom he can restore us whatever we lose whatever the time another thing so with this um we can and we see uh, job's three friend come sorry there are totally four friends who come and approach him but the first is the first three friends fix an appointment with him and they come to meet job when they heard about what's happening in his life so they want to spend time they want to come and personally meet him and be with him during this difficult season so they come and meet job for next 7 days and 7 nights they don't speak anything to him but after that after that when job opens himself shares of his affliction with them then each friend give their own set of views initially it was little good but later on to the conversation because they are not able to understand what is happening with job's life because he has been a good man but still some things are not right knowing god god does not punish uh, the good man but he punishes the uh, sinner so they uh, they conclude they saying that job maybe you would have done some uh, 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 something wrong some you you would have had some secret sin that has turned into such an affliction and that it has brought you to this situation where you have just lost everything and you are sitting on the street and not only your possession but now even your health you have been covered with painful sores you lost everything and is each one share their own uh, own views over job and we see the conversation that is happening from chapter 3 to chapter 37 and his fourth friend now comes before that i will just explain about the four friends the four friends are eliphas he gives three speeches and then we have uh we see uh um, in chapter 2 verse 11 elias the temanite bildad the shuhite and zophar the namtite these are the three friends and uh, lastly elihu the buzite also joins them elihu was a type of christ Elihu was a type of Christ, and uh, he actually uh, finally speaks and suggests Job's suffering arises for reasons of purification or correction rather than punishment. He gives him some kind of strength in his time of affliction. He urged Job to humble himself before God and be patient. because god is greater than man and man's understanding therefore man has no right to question god because there were a lot of questions if you see in chapter 14 job himself is asking <coughs> sorry 
uh, uh, Job himself is asking three questions. Let me be fast because of the time. Who can bring a clean thing? Job 14 verse 4. The first question has been asked. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one. And question two, it says, but man dies and is laid away. Indeed, he breathes his last. And where is he? He's asking God, where is he? And uh, third question in verse four, if a man dies, shall he live again? If a man dies, shall he live again? So all these questions, all these three questions, uh, though Job do not get he does not get the answer for all his three questions even when god starts speaking to him in verse 38 god he does not but then the ones we who read this we can understand all these questions uh, uh, all the uh, three questions of job are fulfilled in jesus in the new testament for which of much many years later god fulfills that he is a redeemer. Jesus is a redeemer. And the second and third question, we see that Jesus is a mediator and he is a advocate. It's been fulfilled. God fulfills all these three questions in Jesus. And Job would have got the answer. And later part, Job realizes in 37, he realizes what he's doing is not right. So he prays and he prays to God. And he prays for his three friends and um, he prays to God. And 38, we see that the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel? My words without knowledge. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. So there are a lot of uh, questions. And here we see God talking about the universe. Who put the earth? Now uh, we see in the signs that um, the scientists found the earth was flat initially. And then they found no, the earth is round and it is hanging in the space. But we see in the oldest book, in the ancient book of Job, God describing the universe, the God who created the universe, describing it that earth is in its place, in its orbit, hanging there by the command, by the word of God. It is not towards its left or it cannot move towards right. It is exactly in the, in the place where it has to be. If you see, there are other nine planets also. They don't move out of the orbit, but they move, circle around the sun, but in their orbits. How? Because God has placed them there and he has instructed them by his word. And also here God talks about the universe, the stars and the constellation. We see God talking about the Orient constellation, the other constellations. Yes, we can, um, due to time, I'm not able to explain how, you know, the constellation are placed and there's a, a west star, which is in the form of cross in the, uh, in, uh, in the, in the sky. Where even um, th those days, now we have GPS access, but those days the navigators in the ship cannot navigate towards the earth. They will just look at that star, the star that is in the shape of a cross. Look at that west star and they navigate themselves to reach the shore. So everywhere you see God's uh, redeeming plan for the mankind is the sign has been placed as a symbol. Well, to the 42, the conclusion. So uh, God is able to convince Job and he's able to talk to him, convince him, know the mighty hand of God, the power of God. And then Job repents, asks God for forgiveness. And he prays also for his three friends. And... When he reconciles with God, repents with God, we see God granting, uh, granting Job and uh, he's been restored back. Now, when he's uh, restored, God restores him double the proportion. Verse 10. Before that, uh, in, in chapter 42, verse 2, it says, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. And verse 5 says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the year and now my eyes sees you. 
Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And as we see the conversation, verse 10, the Lord restored Job's losses and he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Twice as much what he had before. He, he was blessed man. He prayed and then God blessed him. Then all his brothers, all his sisters and all those who had been his acquaintance before came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and a ring of gold. Verse 12. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his blessing, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkey. He also had seven sons and three daughters. It is not there was no resurrection as such there. What God is saying is God gave him, God blessed him. He started working and then he would have got, uh, uh, we are not very sure uh, uh, whether these children are from the same wife. Uh, was she? Did she come back, repented, or ca ca came back or Job got married again? We don't know. But again, God has blessed him with the another children that is again seven sons and three daughters he didn't double the number of the children but he retained the same number of the children and one thing we should know that uh, uh, yeah and he called the name of the first uh, Jemima, the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the uh, uh, third Karen, the three daughters. And in all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. Job had three very beautiful daughters in all over the land. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. And after this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. And Job died old and full of days. You see the blessing of God. You see the restoration of God. God will never forsake us. He loves us. So in understanding of the New Testament, if you have been afflicted with any sickness or disease, please don't have this in mind. Like maybe as how God punished Job, God would have allowed the enemy to punish me. Please don't have it. It is in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, this work is done on the cross. In Job's time, Jesus was not there. But much later, Jesus died on the cross and he has taken away all our sins all our sickness, disease on the cross so that we don't have to suffer. Okay, so we need to cling. If you are, if you, if any sickness and disease, yes, we are for, we are in this world which is fallen. But then, if you have been afflicted with any kind of suffering, difficult situation, circumstances, we need to ask and pray with the authority, Lord, you take away the situation. I command the sickness and disease to leave me. Do not have the mindset to accept it. Oh, God is uh, uh, God is punishing me. I need to endure it. Just like how Job endured it. It is God's will. Please don't do that. Then there is no meaning for what Jesus had done. The work that Jesus did on the cross. Okay. Jesus has taken away all sickness, shame, uh, you know, everything on the cross. So any circumstance that we face in our life, we need to say, Jesus, you have died on the cross for me. You have forgiven me from my sins. And I command the situation to change in the name of Jesus. Speak to that mountain, that mountain will go. Speak to your sickness and disease because it has no authority to afflict you. Because in the New Testament, when we read through the parables of healing, we see God, Jesus says, I'm willing you need to be healed. I'm willing you be healed. Again, in 1 Peter 2.24, we see that. We see that in 1 Peter 2.24. What does it say? Can any one of us please read before we conclude our class? By my stripes, you will be healed. Or you were healed. Can anyone clarify that? What does it say? Uh, 
you were healed you were healed is that past tense present tense future tense past tense ma'am past tense even though if you have sickness and disease when we claim on this saying that you were healed that is by the stripes of jesus by the wounds of jesus we were healed despite our sickness and disease when we claim the scripture over us over our body our god is a god who calls things into existence when we cooperate when we work with god we see the sickness and disease move away from us the situation change and we see the blessing of god the health of god into our body okay so we need to work we need to study the old testament scriptures having the new testament the finished work of jesus on the cross okay and not go completely with the old testament well today the highlights of this books are here which we saw okay with this we will end the book of job so what was our learning if two or three could share did this class help you please unmute when we share. approach god we approach in faith not in fear yes yes thank you john when we approach god we should approach him with faith because as i said faith attracts god that attracts god so we need to pray, approach god with faith and not with fear next anyone else what was the learning from this class or anything that you would like to add on yes there is so much that we can share but because of time we would have not covered everything but something new that you knew and it has not been covered please feel free to share it Ma'am, may I? Yes, please, sir. Ma'am, what I liked about Job is the most thing. Like he is not cursing God, even though he doesn't have any happiness or anything. He is going through a hard time, very struggle. He is going through a disease. He 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 is rubbing his body, very worse condition. But still, his wife is telling, like Adam. Adam was convinced with his wife, and he cursed. Oh, he did the bad thing. But the thing, but the thing is like. he is so much content that he is not listening what his wife is saying but to god he is still content he is praying for his friends even though he has nothing no blessings in his life and this because of this reason only the god blesses him he is saying like i will i came naked and i will go naked he is not having pride of his possession and this thing he is happy with what he have even though he has nothing or he has everything still he is praising god Yeah, and the th and the ma'am, one more thing I want to add. And the thing I what I notice is like we are the children of God, and Satan has no power to harm us. If Satan wants to touch us, still he needs the permission from the Lord. Yes, yes, and I'll just say I see your question here, which is related to the New Testament. Okay, the three temptation that Jesus went through, and your question is how can uh, how can Satan got the power to tempt the Son of God? That is Jesus. Is that your question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, that uh, you will we will cover it when we are studying in New Testament in detail. But then I would just say uh, the man fell in in the book of Genesis when God uh, when uh, Eve when uh, Satan tempted Eve. There are three areas that Eve fell. One is the pride of eyes she fell the fruit was good and then uh, the pride of flesh if she uh, uh, you know if she eats she'll become like god and then uh, uh, she will not she will not die if she eats that fruit she will not die pride of life so the three areas she fell and exactly the temptation we don't know how many times uh, the enemy would have tempted jesus in the uh, in the wilderness but then the three temptation has been recorded exactly of pride of eyes pride of life and uh, pride of the flesh that jesus overcame to which the man fell in the genesis year in the new testament we see that jesus overcame those temptation and also another way to prove that you know man will be tempted but god has given that power for us to overcome through christ did that answer your question thank you ma'am for for the clarity thank you so god bless can can one of us please 
uh, dismiss us with a word of prayer. Rosalind, can you please pray? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lord thank you. Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this session, Father God. As you have taught us, mighty God, according with the life of Job, Father God, help us to be faithful to you, Lord, in the times, Lord, when we need you the most. Lord God, as Job was a righteous man in your sight and you blessed him, um, double fold, Lord God, we pray, Father God, may we not go against you when our times, when we need you the most. Father God, we pray and we bless you, Daddy God. Lord, as you blessed Job uh, with a hedge around him, around his household, around um, everything that he possessed, God, I pray, even as we are righteous before you, Lord, we claim, I claim this promise over each and every one of us, O oh Lord, who are here in this class. Father God, may, may we be blessed. May there be hedge around us, O oh God, around our household, around all that we have. And may our work of our hands be blessed. May our possessions increase in our land, in where we, you have kept us. God, we yes. thank you and we claim these promises claim this promise over each and every one of us. God, thank you for our dear pastor who taught us your word. Bless her in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a great day. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. God bless.